Well, welcome again, uh, Damien. Everybody gets to see your uh, shining happy face now at O zero dark thirty in the morning over there in Sydney. So uh, let us know how you got into Fantasy Grounds and what you do with Fantasy Grounds and all the extensions and more core and all that other good stuff that you do. Sure. So, look, I, I was, I don't know, I, I'd stopped playing RPGs for about 25 years um, and uh, had this itch and thought it's time to uh, see if I can find a group. And um, I was copying a little bit of familial flack, you know, in terms of how many hours I was spending on extracurricular activities. So I thought we'll see if we could find a game online. And uh, oh. I actually found a, a one-shot that Ronky was was running. He was running some GURPS. He's uh, always been a... A Mad King GURPS fan, and I was it was just awesome. I was just so sucked in by the whole experience. Ronky ran a great game, and then the whole um digital tabletop and the, the dice and everything, and it just uh, yeah, dragged me kicking and screaming back into my childhood. And uh, so yeah, I, I started looking madly for games, but same sort of thing happening there. Um, it was there weren't a whole lot of Australian players back then at that time, and uh, mm -hmm. it was finding it really hard to find a game that uh, wasn't going to uh, drag me away from the family too much and so i ended up starting running a game of castles and crusades before i knew what castles and crusades was it was like the closest thing to ad &D. Mm -hmm. and d uh, yeah so i just yeah jumped in on that and i started the game and i was my game would start at like an 11 o'clock at night sydney time so i could get some american players in on the game <laughs> and uh and yeah and actually i met trenlo he uh, he was actually in Sydney at the time, and he jumped in on the game, and he he played in the game for for quite a while. Trinwell has uh, been everywhere. I think I think he's basically uh, hit the, you know almost every country in the world so far, <laughs> and he's game from every one of those countries. So uh, yeah, he's oh, probably sure. the most well known person. Don't worry, the Mexicans will get sick of him soon as well. They'll, yeah. they'll shunt him along, and he'll turn up in Venezuela or, or exactly. somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. Like he's he's nice in small doses and all, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking here. I, I had to, because I was curious too, because uh, it seemed like you've been with Fantasy Grounds forever in the community. And so I pulled up your account and, and shows it March 16th. Uh, the, I mean, it's not quite the Ides of March, the day after the Ides of March on 2011 is when you actually uh, joined officially on the forums. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a good number of years, but um, it seems like it's been even longer than that, you know? Yeah, it feels like that sometimes. <laughs> sometimes more than others yeah no th and i i think the um obviously the game's exploded in the last couple of years you know 5e's had a probably a big bit to do with that 5e getting the licensing deal you know which was um obviously huge for for smiteworks you know it's allowed your team to uh to grow but and you know and obviously to that growth has made the product so much better as well you know the the things that fantasy grounds does today compared to what it was doing in 2011 um you know some of them are just incremental changes but all these changes are are, are better you know there's so many really good things that the, the product does um you know the things that moon wizard codes in there and i'm going to give you know him all the wraps here i'm sorry if you coded some of that doug but um <laughs> you know the, the the things that uh um the platform does uh, are really amazing um really you know it's uh allowed a lot of people to get back into the game and, and to, to re-experience it, which is good fun. You know, a lot of old fellas like us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and so for those that don't know, uh, so Damien, uh, Damien Hupfield is, is your real name, but on the forums, you're damned. You're on our Discord channel as well. I think I, I also thought I saw you on the Fantasy Grounds College Discord um, too, but you you're all over the place. And if anybody has any problems whatsoever, um, especially with regard to like networking, um, you'll almost always see Dan jump in there and help out and, and lend a hand. And, uh, and that's all completely 100% just him volunteering his time and helping the community. So um, when, when I often talk about how amazing our community is, it's because we have people like Dan out there doing, doing what he does and, and um, for no other reason than just to help people. So uh, hopefully you get lots and lots of good karma that flows back your way uh, from, from all your efforts uh, as well. Uh, and then you've done a few things for us officially. Um, the the more notable one being uh, Call of Cthulhu. You and Ian Ward worked on that one. And, uh, and again, I think I mentioned this in a previous stream too, but 
one of the things that's probably the most notable that came out of that that's then uh, spread throughout all of um, Fantasy Grounds rule sets is, is the reference manual and how we have the embedded images and how it just really has, has taken to a new level as far as uh, presentation within Fantasy Grounds. And that was something that, um, that pretty much you and Ian just hashed out and then said, hey, check this out. We found a way to kind of hack it, hack it into the system without making any real substantial changes. And then uh, John was able to kind of take it the rest of the way and, and, and integrate that in fully so that it's now a part of, of our system. And then of course, you know, from my perspective, I take it and run with it on the data side and just make sure that everything gets pushed uh, into that new format. But, uh, but yeah, definitely um, lots and lots of good things, you know, coming from, from Damien. And, um, and, and again, just wanted to thank you for all that you do for the community. And for Smiteworks. Cool. Yeah. yeah, like we were doing Call of Cthulhu, like they're beautiful books, you know, these these fantastic hardcover books. Terrible, terrible, terrible to try and convert into into a digital format because there's stuff everywhere and there's all these sidebars and breakout boxes and everything. And so that's that was what really drove that looking for a better way to do those reference manuals. Yeah. And of course I I come up with little ideas or whatever and, and then try and and then there's these big giant you know, coding nightmares and he has to try and work <laughs> them out. And uh, so he's he's awesome. Ian, Ian uh, um, and I collaborate in lots of little bits and pieces. He does yeah. all the magic, makes it all happen. So it's it's good fun. Now the other thing that you've done a lot on, which is uh, equally or maybe even greater, uh, is the more core rule set. And so that's something that if you're not familiar with uh, with that particular rule set, it's in our wiki. You can download that, add it to your system. It's basically uh, our core RPG rule set, but on steroids. So You've taken a lot of the, lot of the steroids, shortcomings, yeah, yeah w within Fantasy Grounds, uh, within the, the core RPG, and you've really kind of enhanced it and added little little tweaks here and there that have combined to make it a substantial upgrade over what you get in core RPG. And what what that's basically allowed you to do is support. I don't know. Uh, I think you were saying how many projects you had, twelve hundred projects or something like that, <laughs> and it works. But a lot of those are basically like supporting new dice rolling mechanics. Uh, new character sheets for different kind of systems. You even have a on our, and I'll see if I can find a link that I could put in to the chat here. You even have a uh, a section on the forum where people can export their character sheets that they've built within Morecore, and it's and it's basically like a what you see is what you get uh, way to to build a new character sheet. So what you do is you open up Morecore, and it's basically just kind of a plain interface. You can go through and you can add pieces and components to a character sheet. And then you can save that off by exporting a blank one that you can then reuse from multiple characters. And and uh, and you've even gone so far as to offer, if people ha get stuck on it, that you would even hop on and help them do that as long as they export it at the end of the day so that everyone else can use it. So, so I, started, uh, yeah, go ahead. I started doing that because um, we we're writing all these roles, you know, and I think there's about 80 different roles that, that Morecore supports now. So things from you know, Chronicles of Darkness to, to the Witcher RPG, all, all sorts of different roles and stuff. So, um, but we're writing all these roles and all these people would come on, they'd be really enthusiastic, they'd get these roles and then they disappear and go off and play these games. And um, and they're obviously playing these games because you know, there's there's like a thousand more core games a month being run. Um, yeah. But other people weren't picking up those games and being able to play with them, everyone that was coming along doing it. So I, I've, I've started to say like, I'll write you a new role now, but you've got to, you know, package it back up and, and and even just a character sheet, just show us how, how you would run that game in there just to make it easier for the next person who wants to run that game system. Because it's, you know, um, one of the awesome things about um, role-playing games or role-playing role systems is is there are so many systems, but it's also the worst thing about it as well. You know, there's oh, yeah. <laughs> so many Too many systems. games and not enough time, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, so, some of the dice mechanics for some of these systems, I honestly think the guys... Do, whoever designed this is just trying to be different trying to be difficult trying to be like how can i make this just that much yeah anyway coding <laughs> some of those things uh into into fantasy grounds when you're a terrible programmer to start with is uh <laughs> my poor old head yeah well the, yeah of course how you and i actually reached out well i actually reached out to you for the first time a couple of years ago when uh shadow of the demon lords uh we were talking about and you made a a nice uh desktop decal for me and i and i remember that's how how you and i first started uh communicating a couple of years back cool so i think uh we we might have somebody of I, I try and 
keep tabs on everybody who's, who's making doing any sort of serious programming and rule sets and things like that and they're you know keeping a little bit of tabs on that one so uh <laughs> hopefully we'll yeah. see some uh good things coming through for, for shadow of the demon lord soon yeah. yeah 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 hopefully yeah i was just looking at that one of the threads that i posted to to chat here which is um I posted a link to the wiki where you can download it. There's user guides there. There's video guides there on how to do stuff within Morecore. Uh, a lot of the videos are, uh, I think all of the videos that we have linked are, are ones that Damned has actually built the videos and posted up to like YouTube. Um, but there's also a thread that I posted as a secondary uh, post and that has um, kind of some images directly in the thread. If you have any questions, I would recommend starting there um, and then kind of expanding out. I think you've got about 80 or so different dice rolls um, <laughs> described on like the second post there um, and you might may even have support for even more but loads and loads of different dice mechanics that, that are supported through more core that are not available in like core rpg yeah and, and you know a lot of roles um are, are purposed across lots of different games and stuff so there's there's a whole lot of game systems that that are supported um you know whether they're listed there or not that the dice mechanics are already there so of all the games, since you love playing lots of different games and, um, you know, some people only play one game for their entire life or they, you know, they almost always play one, one game. What are, what are maybe your top three game systems that you play of all time? To be honest, I don't actually get to play a lot of games. I get to write this one and then move on and move on and move on and, and <laughs> okay. stuff. But I, yeah. I really enjoy playing Dungeon World. Um, okay. I really enjoy the, uh, um, there's a few things there. I really enjoy the, players helping build the world um helping you know at, at, at being the gm and always trying to know what's out there next or, or create it um sometimes that's really challenging and sometimes it's also you get you find you're creating the same world over and over again um whereas yeah. when you ask the player what happens next or ask the player um why this person doesn't like you or why you're fleeing the city or, or things like that you know they just so many different ideas come back into the system and, and they feed off each other and bounce off each other. So, And the other part of it is that um, I don't have to do as nearly as much prep, you know, with with Dungeon World. I, I can run a game with zero prep or uh, um, have no idea what's going to happen and, and, and the players build the whole story. So I, I really enjoy that because it, it feeds on off my lack of game time or prep time. I mm -hmm. seem to have whittled all the way doing some other FG project or doing something else. Um, but it's also the, the players have so much more buy-in to to that yeah. storyline, not just to the to the game session or, or to to the roll of the dice, but to the whole p building that building that session up because it's it's revolving around ideas that they put into the game and things like that. So um, Dungeon World and any of those other um, powered by the Apocalypse games that that are you know run similarly to that. That I really enjoy those. Yes, yeah, so that that's probably worth checking out because what I what I do a lot of times is I'll steal ideas that I like from one game system and then just plug them in as like an add on or homebrew for another one. And so um, I'm assuming that that's probably something that I, I've done a little bit of that in the past. Something similar where I've you know let people say, okay, well I want to go, uh, you know, we stop by this place and we're we're looking for uh, a suspect for a case or whatever, and then I happen to see uh, the neighbors out mowing his lawn. You know, he's not there, but I'm going to go talk to the neighbor this morning. Well. And that wasn't in the original story, but the player was able to say, oh, there's a neighbor, neighbor mowing your lawn. I'm going to go talk to them. You know, so um, that kind of mechanic, I think, is, is pretty easily portable into another system, uh, even even D&D. &D. And I think, um, how do they do it mechanic-wise within, like, a dungeon world? You know, do they have a, a, a limited number of things in, that you spend whenever you want to create part of the world and you get it reimbursed through role play or, or how does what's the mechanic kind of side of things there i guess that there's a lot of different elements to it but it, it goes right back at, at, to the start of the story you you ask a question of each player and you know and you you won't ask the same question of the player but you might say you know what happened last time you were here or you know and they'll tell you that they they got into a, a fight over over a gambling table or something like that you know and then you'll ask the next person that question it might be related to the first question or the first answer you know and yeah. if it's not you know the second or the third one will and eventually all of these things will come back in and you know and that that penultimate scene in that one shot you know it'll it'll be all, all leading back from something that happened in that very first scene one of those first questions that you you ask the players back there you know hmm. so do, doing things like that 
good fun, you know, and sometimes the players yeah. will remember it, it'll be bubbling along the back of their head, and they'll be going, something it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, you know, and then all the action starts happening, you know, swords and spells and dragons start happening, and they all forget it, and suddenly it comes and bites them on the ass at the end. So that's good very fun. Nice. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, I'll have to check that out for sure. It sounds sounds very intriguing. Uh, and definitely something that's something I could still <laughs> put in that other game systems. Yeah, that was something yes. that I that I've incorporated into my games. I'll always kind of reverse the storytelling back to the player, which Dungeon World promotes a lot. You know, when they walk into an alchemist store, I'll, you know, I'll provide, provide the corny voice and, and the NPC, but then I'll, you know, I'll reverse it back on them and say, what do you see in here? And, you know, what does the NPC look like and stuff like that? So, yeah, I do I, I do that as well. Like you were saying, Doug, you take different aspects of different games. And like I see a plus five bur- burble sword that says, for sale, 10 gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but then you just go with it. That happens. Like, He's like, wait a minute, yeah. Some some a hole basically put the wrong sticker on this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's not even a normal sword. It's a uh, yeah. It's a cursed backbiter. Yeah. Oh, they they switched the tags. Oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. it's the one point five million gold piece sticker. Here it is, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so there's you know there's there's two ways on that. One is that you know you you do try and drag it back to where you were going, but the other way is that. Like, if that's the, the story that the player really wants to run, you know, how do you, uh, how do you yeah, just go you with it? Yeah. Dab him in the back with it later on, you know, that bus five or pull sword, you know, it gets, it gets stolen off him just, uh, just prior to the big battle and, and things like that. So. Or, it, or it was already stolen. And then he tried to get rid of it quickly because he didn't want to get busted. And then, <laughs> and then the, the Duke that owned it shows up looking at, Hey, yeah. someone stole my sword. And they said it was fenced here recently. And then you're holding it. What? Huh? <laughs> yeah, a portal opens, a yep. Balor jumps out and just takes a sword and just destroys the entire apothecary <laughs> store. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's on sale for cheap because it's cursed, <laughs> but you have to choose to accept it, right? <laughs> so you, you were saying, uh, Damien, that you, you took a uh, a long break. You know, when did you start playing D&D? And, uh, well, when did you start playing role-playing games? And was it, you know, was it D&D and what edition did you get in and stuff like that? Yeah, so yeah, I was about twelve, and I was playing D and D. We played AD and D first, and then some basic basic expert D and D. But uh, I um, went to boarding school, and uh, the boarding school uh, assured me that D and D was uh, going to corrupt me and steal my soul and damn me to, to hell. And, and of course, that's what I was looking for. But no, they thought it was going to happen <laughs> for real. Um, and now and your so username like, is damned. So uh, they yeah, were correct. Yeah, you know, they you, were right. You did get, you did get damned. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we, we, we are, so D&D got banned. So we, we started playing Gangbusters and Top Secret. And of course, we, we started to do that a little bit quietly on the side. You know, we were playing all these other games that weren't D&D and uh, weren't going to damage our souls. And um, and of course, you know, you finish school and you know, off to uni and off to pubs and clubs and things like that. You know, I sort of didn't come back to it for a long time. And uh, yeah. yeah. And then when I get back to it, I find that uh, you know, there's a lot of people my age with similar stories have gone away from it. Whether it's five years or ten years or twenty years, you know, um, yeah. they've come back to it because there's there's a lot of good fun there. You know, you get to meet some great people. You get to uh, tell some wild stories you get to uh yeah just good fun yeah and i think for an, for adults um you know there's only so many different activities that really are adult appropriate to do anymore and, and so this is one that you could easily do from your home and and uh especially now with the online options uh, it makes it really convenient to be able to, to get and do that whereas you know i remember like my parents age, my parents weren't so much into it. my my uh, in-laws were like they would go to bridge clubs and stuff like that. That seems like dreadfully boring <laughs> to go sit and play bridge all the time. But I'm like, uh, you know, it's like they do that or they'll volunteer at a church or they'll like, you know, uh, maybe maybe play volleyball or something like that, which is which is good to get some exercise. But I mean, not everybody's cut out to do that or has an interest in doing that sort of stuff. So there's only so many things really that that are kind of out there. And I think it definitely fills a, a good, um, you know, a, a good gap. Here's one for you, Doug. My yeah. parents made me take, and I'm not kidding when I say this, my parents made me take organ lessons. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. 
So that, that, that sounds that good. Was pretty, and I did it. For That's going to come so. into play at some point in your career. Probably you'll end up with an organ that you'll use to, as a lead into one of your D and D sessions or something. You'll be like, da, 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 you know, whatever. I would, I would love to have one of those huge church organs. That's what I would love to have. And just <laughs> blare it throughout the entire neighborhood. But I mean, that, that yeah. just wouldn't fit into a house. So with, with daredevil and, uh, and bullseye hopping around fighting on it. Right. <laughs> yeah. oh, you'll you'll that, be doing this, um, Curse of Strad, you'll be doing the Strad cameo in the, in the dining room when the, the party first come in and this the ghostly Strad just playing away on his big organ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, It'll be Dave. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so what other what current projects do you got going on, Damien? That you can talk about. Yeah. That you yeah. expect to finish, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I expect to finish. That's none of them because none of this, you know, never you guys keep changing yeah. the system and we've got to keep patching sure. it and fixing it and bringing it back up to date. But, um, so I'm, I'm working on a, um, a pulp style, mm. uh, dungeon world type or powered by the apocalypse game. So, um, you know, all, all the pulp tropes, but you know, it's, it's, it's pulp. It's supposed to be tropey. It's supposed to be full of all those things, Nazis and, and a bit of wild science and things like that. So, um, I've, I've played a few one shot groups of that through, uh, um, at, at various FG cons and things like that. And that that's been good, but I've got to spend a bit more time on that. You know, every, mm -hmm. every session I play, you know, the character creation changes or the, the, the mechanics change a little bit working through that. Um, yeah. working with a couple of different people who are on, you know, Semi. I'm a big fan of like Savage Worlds for pulp stuff. Um, seems like it just that fast kind of playing system seems to really lend itself well to pulp games. Really, the only thing I hate about Savage Worlds is if you don't take the throwing skill, you can't freaking throw anything. <laughs> <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> I don't every think time I've I play any Savage players. Worlds, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's yeah. right. The, the any time I play Savage Worlds, it's the first skill I pick is throwing skill, and I stack that yeah. skill because I know I'm always going to throw something in the game, and the GM's just going to throw it back straight at me. I think in all the all the Savage Worlds games I've actually ran, I don't think anybody has ever taken throwing, but I've had yeah. players try to use shooting for throwing. I've had I've yeah. had players try to do that before, but I'm like, oh no, that's going to be an unskilled check. Yeah, just just homebrew something. Just say, hey, yeah. everybody knows how to throw stuff. You know, just yeah. just homebrew it based off of one of their attributes or something. Yeah. I would just tie it back to that. So if it's that, something that you're like that you feel like everyone should really be able to do. So well, somebody said that they actually had um, draw I metals as their parents. Bond. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, I saw that in the chat. It, his parents made him take organ lessons too. <laughs> organ lessons as well. So I'm you're sorry. not the only one. So there, who knows? There might be a whole group of uh, fantasy grounds people that are all classically trained in organ. We can have this little organ playoff for the, to, to see who gets to do the cameo as Strad in that scene. We've got some there competition. Go. Tape. <laughs> yeah, the guy. The the organ uh, instructor that I had, her name was Mary. And she was, and, and this was back in the early 80s. And this lady was, I would say, probably at least 80 or 85 years old uh, at that point. But she was so nice. And, you know, uh, but I remember this one song that I had to work on, and I worked on it for years, was a song called Journey by Camel or something like that. And uh, I, I actually catch myself sometimes kind of like, playing the organ on on my desk or something because it was just ingrained into me for all those years and you know a couple of other you know, songs but i haven't i haven't actually tried to play in years i should probably tr you know what you're right i think i should probably buy should. a keyboard or something just, yeah. just stroll up just no just stroll up to the nearest church the one one with the big tall doors the entry because you know that they're gonna have an organ if i got found big, a like, stone i actually a found a stone made church here in el paso and it is yeah, man, there's, old there's and probably, it is beautiful there's probably an organ in there just stroll in the middle of the afternoon and just start playing on the organ and just just go to town <laughs> sort of like chevy chevy chase did back in uh caddyshack when he gets on the organ he goes i was born to love you i was born to lick your face <laughs> <laughs> yeah before you before you go into the church you're gonna have to find the one non-black t-shirt that you own i'm sure you've got one t-shirt in that in that's that cupboard black. somewhere that's not yeah. white not black, if, yeah. you, you know you you've, you're like the first person that's actually noticed that damn everything that i wear 
is black pretty much. I mean, every, all the the game shirts I buy are black. All the other shirts, but I do on occasion. I have I have some other grays and blues and stuff like that. But it's very rare that I ever wear anything besides. See, we're black. both wearing. Dan and I are both rocking the gray shirts. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I got my fantasy ground shirt on, but it, it's black. Yeah. But I, I'll tell you what. When once we have the the new uh, store up with you know shirts, I'll definitely pick up some different colors because uh, I, I like the you know the way the new logo looks, and I think it will look good on some other you know lighter so, yeah, so pastel that's, that's colors. Sneaky drop in at the new logo, the nice flat <coughs> style logo. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, courtesy of Carl. Carl is uh, the, the one that oftentimes says, you know, and he's real polite about it too. He's like. <laughs> That one's fine. The one you have is okay, but perhaps this one might look a little bit like more modern or whatever. And then he'll he'll kind of send feedback along that way. And so I'm like, yeah, okay, that's that's true. So we start slowly evolving. And that's how we kind of evolve on a lot of things, to be honest. Is that you know we do things a certain way for a while, and uh, you know you have a tendency to just keep doing things in the same way is is what you always do. But I think for the most part. Um, not to try to pat myself on the back here, but I do try to listen to people when they have ideas. I, you know, for the most part, I can disconnect and separate what we've done in the past from what we can do in the future. And I'm not like, no, we have to always do it this way. because This is the way it must be done. You know, so we listen and there are some things that we like people will say, hey, this is really stupid that you do it this way. You should do it this way. And even even if the feedback comes that way, you know, I still consider it. We still try to, to move things that way when they make sense. There are some times when we are just like, that does make sense. But it's not very easy for us to change at this point. So we're going to continue on for a while until maybe a later date when we might be able to, to you know, move along a certain path. Uh, but you said something earlier when you were first talked about you like to play pulp games. My mind heard pope games, like a pope RPG, <laughs> and that would be really cool to be a pope RPG because I just came across a, a history, a uh, little history tidbit that was in someone shared it on Twitter. So I'll share that to everyone here. Uh, so it was about, I'm going to see if I have it now. I think I sent it to, I sent it to my, to my wife and son because I thought it was so cool. It's basically, there was a Pope in around 850 AD or so, um, that, that was basically, um, he became the Pope, but there was a lot of political maneuverings going on at that point in time. Oh yeah. It's called the Cadaver Synod, uh, S-Y-N-O-D. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Basically, it's Pope Formosus who um, who kind of ran afoul of the future popes. He died uh, in office, you know, as popes do, because they don't really ever leave office until they die. And uh, they didn't like all of the ordinations that he had kind of passed during his brief stint. So they dug his body up after he was dead. They dressed him in all full pope garb put him on the throne and they had an entire trial where they asked him questions and they accused him of things. And I guess he didn't defend himself sufficiently. So he was found guilty or whatever of violating all these things. And then they, they like, they chopped off his two fingers, his thumb that he had used to bless everything. And like they undid, they uh, rewind, rewound all of the things that he had passed. And then they threw his body in the Tiber river um, afterwards. And then some monks, so the story, you think that's crazy story enough, but some monks actually found his body. They fished it out of the river and then they reburied, they gave it a proper burial. And, um, and then later another Pope came in and then they reinstated all of uh, Pope Formosus's, you know, ordinations that he had done. And then I think they got switched out again with a different papacy. And then they dug the same people dug him up, a second time <laughs> and then they chopped his head off that time they beheaded him and excommunicated him and all this other kind of stuff i'm like so they really really did not like that guy but i thought that was pretty cool like it's often funny to like think about uh especially popes because you know we think about the old popes that, that are out there now you know uh just kind of tooling around and and standing in front of crowds and stuff like that but like i always think it's funny when you see like these old there was one uh movie that a friend of mine liked and i can't remember which movie it was but it had the pope dressed in full heavy plate male armor riding on a <laughs> on a war horse and all this other kind of stuff and like, popes have not always been what we think of as a pope i just think that's kind of it's an interesting kind of point in history that i'd like it would be fun to role play during that time period where, one know, of my one of my characters names was called full metal pope and that's what, metal pope, that's yeah. yeah, full metal pope, and that's what my uh, my world of tanks name is when I play world of tanks, full metal pope. Yeah, around smashing people. Yeah, well, my, my son was like, a, "Why would they do that?" I'm like, "Well, because of 
infallible. You have to have some, <laughs> because he was infallible, they had to basically completely say that he was not ever a pope to begin with. So they had to go through this whole trial thing, I guess, so that they could say that all the stuff that he had passed wasn't, wasn't legit. So my default know. answer would be it's the dark ages. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's, it's yeah. the middle ages, the dark ages. There's as good as stories as we can come up with sometimes. Sometimes there's just history, like right. things that really happen in real life are just so much worse, so much better, so much whatever <laughs> way you want to call it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Rasputin a history is another one that, caught, that always pops up is, is yes. really his whole story about how many times they try to kill him and how all the different ways they try to kill him actually counteracted the other ways. And you're like, he would have died because they poisoned him, but then they stabbed him and they threw it, which let out some of the, like, which kind of like blood let in, uh, blood let in so that it, it got some of it back out of the system. And then they threw him in the cold river, which slowed his metabolism down. So it didn't go through a system. And, that's, and I'm like, that's just hilarious. That's almost like uh, a comedy of errors movie that you would watch nowadays, you know, with all the different things going on. For hearing the, the term, this dude had nine lives. He did have nine lives. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. So there, uh, you want to take a couple of uh, questions, Damien, and then we'll let you uh, we'll let you get out of here. Uh, there, there's one question here uh, by Benok that that's wondering: uh, Will there ever be an official Dungeon World rule set coming to Fantasy Grounds? At yeah, some look, point? I've it's uh, that is <laughs> one of those 1,200 in progress pro, uh, projects. Yeah, it's it's a fair way along. It's just uh, you know I've got a bit of a scout of mine. I just get you know shiny start chasing something else something that's a little bit shorter easier to complete but yeah the the dungeon world um rule set is uh even in its current state it's pretty cool it's it, all, all the core dice rolling and mechanics is, is is set up there and uh um i've just got to get back to it yeah. so yeah th so there will be one coming along soon one of the things we could do to help out with that is once we finally get fancy ground unity out there and live and in the wild and all of these networking issues start to go away then just think of all the time you'll have to devote towards all those 1200 projects because well, right now not you're just that not yeah. just the networking stuff but you know more core might go away too you know with with some with of carl's dice, um, yeah. yeah absolutely well john's um uh dice rollers but also some of the things that uh carl was doing with tabletop connect where um you know you could just embed um buttons and dice rolls onto a graphic or a sheet you know all, yeah. all those sorts of things so um yeah there, there's there's a whole lot of things you guys could do just get the damn thing out man i know i know <laughs> that, <laughs> we talk about that all the time where it's like come on get it out the door let's get but you know it, but it'll not, be, be, when it's not be a hot mess when it gets out the door either that's the other thing we can't yeah. we can't deliver it as a hot mess we gotta it's gotta be a little bit a little bit of polish to it it can be a little rough if it's an alpha but um if it's too rough people are going to be like what the hell is this what were we waiting for so drone metal uh, ask oh go ahead sorry damien yeah no and, and the thing that you guys say and it's the thing I, I i repeat a lot of times you know fantasy grounds is is just not static it's not people working on uh unity in the background and 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 the foreground product is, is isn't going anywhere you know you've got um so many things that are evolving continuously you know there's three or four major upgrades to, to fantasy grounds every year plus you know all the little bug fixes along the way after after a major upgrade and all the D dlc that comes out you know, a couple of new rule sets every year so all these things um yeah you know, and a lot of that stuff is is being co-developed on on unity or developed in unity and backported into into the live ones so um you know the the product today is is a great product you know the the, the limitation yeah. it has you know for me I think the networking is a big issue for yeah. others. It's it's the memory. You know, there there are limitations, but um, you know, a lot of those things are being addressed. Um, it's it's good. It's good. Things are going in the right direction, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, we certainly certainly hope so. Uh, it just seems like timing wise, we, we definitely. I think once FGU does drop, I think it'll be uh, it'll just be a big weight off of our shoulders, you know, so that we can focus <laughs> focus a lot more attention on on a, on a couple of things that we've been. Kind of holding off but yeah we do we do try to keep all the fires going at the same time and, and it just gets us a little bit like you said scatterbrained when you're dealing with 1200 different projects we have a little, little bit of that just resulting from the fact that we've got that going on plus you know like you said the, the rule set updates that are new rule sets that are being added all the time and uh and for my end that's what you know i spend a decent amount of my time doing is, is working with you know trying to get new systems set up and out the door and, and that's that kind of thing so um 
that that takes a decent amount of time, but I'm also a little hesitant to pull the trigger on a few things. I'm like, man, I know I've got all of these indie artists that have reached out to us that want to do map packs and stuff, but they're all tile based. So we can't can't do any of those yet. You know, it wouldn't really make sense to do do certain things until until kind of afterwards. But and then we've got a ton of work on our play really once it does come out and we get you know the enhanced images then we'll have to start going back in we have over 1200 dlc a lot of those are going to want to be having like line of sight added to them so that you don't have to do it within the app you know um you know we'll make it so that you can do that within the app but again when you buy a ready to run adventure you're going to want to as much as possible have everything pre-set up and just ready to go so there's there's a whole we're going to be busy for a while basically so uh, <laughs> I'm not worried about uh, running out of things to you, that's for sure. Yeah, Dream. And the, the map features that uh, Carl's demoed are, are just awesome. You know, the yeah. carving that road through 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 the map, you know, and it blending into the background, um, the the dynamic effects, you know, with with the rain or the the clouds, things like that. Uh, yeah. You, you don't and you don't have to go overboard on these things. You know, just the game's an imagination game. It's it's a game, but. You know, when when you see something like that roll through, and it's it's just fun. You know, it puts a smile. Everyone everyone enjoys that moment. You know, when they first see those things. So, yeah, yeah. there's there's stacks of things out there that uh, I'm looking forward to. That's for sure. And he's really bought into the idea of uh, it being quick. You know, so um, you know you can definitely do a lot of really cool things if you have a lot more setup time. Um, but you know, he he like I said, is really bought into the idea that. The way he did the paintbrush was was a direct result of, of wanting to keep it uh, quick. So it's not just stamping in roads and trying to like fiddle with them and make them look. You know, it's almost you, you turn on a brush, which happens to be an image, and then you're painting with the brush just however you draw it, and it's just that fast, you know. And then you know the line of sight things when you're going to have line of sight linked with walls that you're drawing that are like a brush, have it do the you know do both at the same time instead of. You do the brush, and you're like, okay, now I have to go back and try to, you know, match my line of sight uh, to the wall that I just drew, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, should be should be really pretty pretty fun. Um, I think we're all very very anxious to see it actually get out there and be used, um, and hopefully we can we can get that cranking uh, before long. So, uh, what are, what are things that you're excited about? Like any any new game systems that you're excited about that you heard of coming down the pipeline, uh, not just within Fancy Grounds, but just you know in general and Kickstarters or anything else kind of going on. Uh, nope. Nope. So uh, yeah, yeah, no, I've 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 decided I've got enough game systems uh, that I run yeah. and play. So you know when when people tell me they want a, a new dice drop, I'm not going to read that book. I'm not going to read that. I'm not even going to yeah. read the quick starter. You know. You have All to spell right. it out to me. In, You're in stopping so at twelve hundred now, right? You've... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it'll be it'll be eleven ninety nine in about six months' time. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, good deal. Yeah. So no, I, I'm, you know, I, I I spend a lot of time doing this stuff, but you know, it's all in small sections. You know, to 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 play games, you know, you need four hours. You need some prep time. You need to get people together all at the same time, and I find that really hard to fit in. So I have my regular games that I run, and um and and that's as much as I can do at those, and um, mostly that's 5e. But you know, we've played Castles of Crusades, we've played Dungeon World, we've played a few other game systems, uh, Call of Cthulhu. Um, but for the most part, you know, the games and systems that I run, it, it's a pretty narrow band. Yeah, yeah, just not yeah. enough time. Yeah, yeah. I, I've actually, I, when I get back to Florida, I'm leaving on Monday, and I've got uh, 14 more big apple and banana boxes full of nothing but books. And when I bring them back here, I'm taking them to the game store and getting credit like I did with like four boxes that I already had. So I'm just cool. narrowing down everything. Um, I'm just staying with uh, Star Wars Fantasy Flight and 5e and Pathfinder and Starfinder. And that's going to be it for me. And set, set Savage Worlds, but just like Deadlands. So, yeah. That's so, uh, we should probably let Damien go yeah. and get, get some rest because it's uh, sneaking up on three o'clock for him. And then we're going to, like we said earlier in the thing, we're going to flip it and we're going to go back through and talk about the new releases, the cells. Uh, we'll stay on for a few more questions and stuff like that. Uh, so thanks again, Damien, for everything that you've done. Thanks for coming on the show today and staying up so late. And uh, we'll get some beauty sleep, man. Yeah, yeah. okay. And, yeah, and we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't see your wife barge in on you either. Like, you, <laughs> so that's good. I have a, I have a like view of that uh, that commercial where he's like talking in the middle of the night to his insurance agent, and his wife catches him. Who oh, are you yeah. talking to? 
And he's like, it's it's my insurance agent, Bob. And <laughs> well, he sounds horrible, or she yeah. sounds horrible. What do you wear in Bob or something like that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you wear in Bob? I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, thanks yeah. again, Damien, for coming on. We we uh, we totally appreciate it, man. We really do. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. All right. Take care, Damien. Thanks, man.